You ever watch something that other people obviously love and that just doesn't speak to you, but you can still recognize the quality of it? That's how I feel about One Punch Man. Um, and I think I figured out what's kind of not working for me. And it is Saitama himself. Um, the Certainly, this is an animated series with extremely high quality animation. It is basically an animator's showcase. Um, so it's all about just seeing how, you know, how awesomely someone can animate a fight scene. And I think on that level, the show could be watched just as, a, as it is. Uh, but ultimately, or, or more deeply, it appears to be a show. And I only watched it through episode four, so these are just my thoughts based on that uh, so far. Um, it kind of deals with grown-up ennui. You know, the idea of having to be grown-up and having to deal with life's responsibilities and getting a job and so forth and just not feeling particularly up for that, right? And, and feeling kind of dispirited. You can certainly say some things that this would be about modern Japanese culture, and obviously it's a bit of a commentary on that. Um, but I had a, a tough time getting engaged with the show. Partly that's because it is a parody of shonen. And I didn't grow up watching shonen series. Um, yeah, I, I didn't grow up loving guys punching each other so a lot of the parody like I see and I get and is accurate parody but it's not parody that I find hilariously funny just because it's parodying something right um, it's like if somebody goes parodying 1940s culture I'm sure it's an accurate parody or it might be but I'm just not going to really respond to that um, so that's part of the, the difficulty of the, of the appeal for me, which other people are going to just um, jump onto. And there are other you know, anime things. There was a Gundam Wing joke in there, which surprised me and delighted me. Um, but the problem fundamentally is the main character, Saitama. I just don't find him particularly interesting. He's just not a an engaging protagonist. Um... And people in the chat room were saying, and that's kind of part of the, the, the whole point of the show, where he is kind of disconnected emotionally from the world. And he is dis uh, disconnected emotionally. Uh, I would argue he's not completely emotionless. He certainly has reactions to things that are just muted. And I certainly know people in real life who are that distant emotionally. So it didn't seem all that extreme to me. Um, I mean, it's extreme, but it's not um, extreme to a point that that was parody or, or was or felt strange. I don't know. Um, and we were talking about what I call the Shinji problem, uh, namely that there are certain personalities that some people just don't like spending time with. You know, where they may be realistic, they may be accurate, they, they may be people who are um, behaving the way somebody actually would in real life in this situation. But that doesn't mean that we actually want to watch that for 13, 26, 50 episodes. Um, you know, having a giant robot series where the main character literally curls up in a ball in a corner for the entire episode and refuses to do anything is going to get old after a while. Um, that's not what Shinji does, but... Shinji from Neon Genesis Evangelion is a good example of this, where some people just find him very frustrating to watch. They just don't enjoy watching a series with a character who is that passive and that unwilling to act. So they just really hate the character. Um, and I, I don't share that exact frustration, but I understand the sentiment. I see where people are coming from with their frustration. Um, and, you know, fundamentally the point is, you know, there are some um, personalities that make for difficult protagonists. And this is the problem, one of the problems I'm having with One Punch Man is that Saitama is just not a very interesting character to watch. He's not. There's just not much there. Um, hey, Dropkicks. I'm going to give you two episodes of One Punch Man. Yeah. Now, folks in the chat room are saying, of course, it gets better as it goes along, which, I'm sorry, is not an excuse. 
um, you know, um, if I give something four episodes and it's still not gelling, I'm sorry. Um, it's just not going to be for me. Um, and again, it, it is very much a parody. The other problem is that especially those first two episodes feel like they're written by an adolescent who who just finds parodying shonen in and of itself unutterably hilarious, right? Just having a ridiculous monster design is enough to make you, you know, roll around on the floor laughing for minutes on end. And I just don't share that particular uh, thing. Um, you know, parody is fine, but just copying something or just making a... Um, a a reference to something doesn't make you brilliant, right? Uh, now, obviously, there's a nostalgia factor in play, too. If you like shonen, and if you like those things, and if you see that parody, that may speak to you, and that's great. You know, I'm not saying one should not enjoy those parodies and enjoy those references. Um, it just you know, doesn't mean that everyone is going to fall over themselves laughing about it, right? So that, that's fine. Um... The other problem I had is four episodes in, and then there has not been a single um, uh, non-evil female character. That just kind of stuck out to me. Um, just seems a little weird and problematic. Uh, maybe there's one later on in the show, but it sure didn't seem like that way from the uh, the opening credits. Um, you know, we, we still had the you know two episodes in. What we had the woman as evil seductress trope, which. Again, I understand that, but it, it, there's just a lot of testosterone in this show. Um, and it's not that you have to have a strong female character in every show. It's just, it, it, it stuck out as being kind of an odd omission. Um, and it's another problem with Saitama, is it because he is, you know, if they had introduced a female character who has some interest in him, um... I think that would go a long way towards making the show more interesting because as it is, Saitama is just kind of a dead fish for the entire thing. Uh, again, he, he does have his some emotional reactions to things, but it's just pretty, I don't know, it's pretty, um, um, there's not enough there for me to care about him. And because of the setup of the show where he's invincible and kills everyone in one blow, none of the fights have any weight. You know, I know how they're all going to end, so I don't care. Because there are no stakes beyond that, right? It's not, I have to defeat this person in a certain amount of time and he's not letting me, and that means somebody else is going to be in danger. You know, that gives you some stakes, but there's been none of that in the entire show yet. Um, now, people might say, well, this is, this is, that's just shonen, right? What do you expect? I expect Rurouni Kenshin, where... Episode one, they establish the limitations of the character's powers and the fact that absolutely he can be late and people will die. And he can't afford to be late. Um, and he is very much invested in the outcome of these fights and indeed gets involved in more fights than he has to because of his, his desire for, for justice. And that makes him an interesting character. Um, you know, the... the his powers give him inherent limitations and problems that he has to solve in combat. Whereas this is the exact opposite. And again, that's part of the parody. That's part of the joke. And I get that. But it, it makes it hard for, for someone like me, who, again, doesn't find shonen inherently exciting, doesn't find action inherently exciting, to really engage in the show. So that, I think, is the... Is the main issue I had. Again, amazing animation. Just, I could watch this show just for the animation. I probably won't. Uh, but yes, definitely high quality action animation throughout. Um, the characters, though, just, yeah, uh, They're just awfully thin. Again, kind of intentionally because it's a shonen parody. Um, the plot is very basic and straightforward. Um, see, and he, so... Uh, Okay, here, here we go. I'll compare this to Airplane, one of my favorite comedies of all time, which is a parody. But the way they made that parody was by taking the plot of an actual disaster movie and adding a layer of parody on top of it. So all this product stuff is happening, but you still have all of the, all of the drama and character interactions 
of a classic disaster movie in that movie. And One Punch Man didn't have that. So that was, that was I think, part of the problem, is I, I just wanted more out of it. I wanted something to grab onto. Um, and this is just, you know, guy fights people over and over again um, and punches them and kills them. And it's, eh, that just wasn't very interesting. And again, I'm, I know there's plot later on, but I needed more than that for this particular show. So that's my thoughts on One Punch Man at this point. Unfortunate.